crazy finish, I guess. Can you just talk us through your emotions of, first of all, having such a big lead, losing it, and then getting it right back at the end? Oh, just proud. Um, proud with the way that they fought the game out. Um, I thought we set it up really well in the first half and got the game looking the way that we wanted. Um, just our pressure around the ball. If we didn't kind of execute and nail the first or second tackle, we had a third and fourth player turning up to make sure that we were able to win the ball back and get it going our way. Um, went down in clearances, but because we were prepared to work away from that, um, it meant that we were able to win the territory battle. And then I thought our forwards, like at times, um, with giving Richmond a spare defender, we were able to just get a contest. We wanted the ball on the ground um, and our forwards did a tremendous job of that. Um, so just super proud. Things didn't um, look exactly how we would like in that last quarter. Um, Richmond sort of peppered us with inside 50s, um, but we'll go to work on that and just their ability to keep adjusting to the different scenarios that the game gave us in terms of being up by a short margin, down by a short margin. To see a young group that we put out on the park tonight um, think and problem solve their way through that and fight the way they did, um, it gives us great belief. The way that the players embraced you after the game, it must be really, you must be really proud first off of the team, but for them to have that connection with you, is that an important part of, of your job as a coach to establish those um, personal connections? Yeah, I'm not sure that I'm meant to go in the song and get a, a Gatorade shower, but um, <laughs> I'm going to cop it off someone for that, I'm sure. But um, absolutely, like that was probably my priority coming here is to build relationships and make sure um, that every single player feels like I value them and um, that, I, that I see them for their strengths and want to help them develop as footballers and people. So, yeah, it was a nice moment. Um, but over and above that, a nice one for me to see them have. Um, I know that they haven't you know, been able to have that kind of reward of, of winning as much as they would have liked. So um, with the, the seven debutants we put out there, five in their first ever AFLW game, and it was an average of about 20 games experience across the park, uh, for them to go up against a, a really strong Richmond side like that and compete and stay connected through whatever the game threw at us, um, yeah, we'll take that. Without Emma Swanson, obviously, as well, a lot of us stepping up to the captaincy role. How did you see her game? Obviously, she went to Monty a little bit, but how did you see her? Yeah, um, her and Charlie, um, as co-vice captain, shared captaincy role in Swanee's absence. I mean, um, can't wait to have Swanee back out there. She's been an absolute war warrior for our footy club, and um, yeah, it'll be it'll be nice to add her back into our midfield mix when she gets her body right. But. Um, yeah, for Bella and Charlie to step up, not just today, but throughout the week has been um, really pleasing. They're such young players and, and young leaders. Bella had a big job going head to head on, on Mon Conti and um, there were patches where we thought that um, she was getting the damage done. And then Conti, we know, is going to influence the game at different stages. Bella's assignment wasn't to go and shut her out of the game so she doesn't get it, but um, to, to limit her influence. Uh, she probably had um, back end of a couple of the quarters, Mon got on top, but we thought Bella's heart and ability to just keep competing and have some really important moments to get the ball going our way. Um, yeah, we sort of had, had a plan B, but didn't, didn't feel like we wanted to go to it because Bella was doing a good job. How does a win like tonight compare, like as a coach obviously, how does that compare to a player when you kind of have one of those really fighting wins? <coughs> All wins are good, player, coach. <laughs> um, how does it compare? I don't know, I haven't really compared it. I'm just, I think it's a different feeling like, um, yeah, it, it, you're probably in it and the excitement, exhilaration of playing because you're adrenalised out there, but it's probably a bit more pride because it wasn't me that went out there and did it or contributed to doing it, it was, it was them. So you just sit back in awe of um, their resilience and effort and, um, yeah, pr pride is, the, the, I guess, the, the overriding emotion. Just, it's tough for you to sit back in those moments that are peppering you, particularly late, it's a tough as a obviously former player to, to sit there and, and kind of keep your... No, no, um, yeah, it was, it, I'm, I'm content with where my playing days ended up and um, yeah, a couple of years out of the game now and my hands full as coach, um, it's just as rewarding now to sit back and see others, others go and do. Um, and yeah, we, we had to kind of go through the win the game, or save the game scenario where we're trying to shut the game down late and then Obviously they hit the front and we had to win the game, so for them to be able to 
get that done structurally and work through that, it's going to be an incredible learning opportunity for us as well. I mean, you get to this stage on the eve of round one today and think, have we done enough of that? <laughs> um, but, you know, we got this gift tonight. We walk away with a win and the belief that we get out of that. But we'll, there'll be some great learnings out of the, the couple of minutes where we were sort of fighting one way or another. So, um, yeah. It'll be a good one to review. Um, there'll be plenty to learn from it. It wasn't a perfect game, and Richmond certainly had their moments, which we knew they would. But um, yeah, we want to keep competing and learning. So we're going to get both those things out of tonight when we watch it back. Take us inside your own head. Three minutes to go, they take the lead, and obviously you get it back. Are there levers you can pull at that stage, or is it all down to the players? Um, oh, well, we've got a obviously bench sign and um, runner goes out after they kick the goal and that's something we've practiced is the win the game scenario. Um, so it was something, in terms of levers, it was something that we had kind of coming into the game um, to make sure that, you know, if, if Richmond pull their levers to try and save it, because it almost flips the scenario that we've been living in the last three minutes, um, we have a, a strategy for that and then a strategy for making sure we get some really damaging players in spots where they can influence the game and um, sometimes there's a bit of luck in it. Um, but we got the, the structural look we wanted and then the, the players that we sort of try and set the game up around managed to influence. So um, a bit of practice, a little bit of good luck, I reckon. What do you make of um, Hoskins' first half against the former side? She was outstanding. Um, you know, like we got we we wanted as soon as we realised Hosco was available. Um, we know we wanted a bit of maturity and experience to help complement our young list, and we wanted someone who's an unconditional competitor um, to make sure that on days like this, and then throughout the week when we're training, that um, we can maintain a really high standard of competitiveness. And Hosco brings that, um, and she also brings a, a great ability to connect our group um, in you know hard times and then good times like tonight. So. Um, aside from the goals she kicked, which she finished brilliantly under, under pressure and against her old side as well, um, just her ability to compete. There was times <clears throat> Richmond had, you know, plus two or plus three defenders behind the ball and she just did enough to fight and scrap and get the ball on the ground, which is trademark Osco really. Um, and the rest of our group just sort of got in behind her. So I thought she really set the tone in that first quarter. And Emma for next week, what are the chances of playing? Yeah, um, a real chance for next week, yep. Um, so, you know, based on training and how she gets through and hopefully her body keeps responding, but um, yeah, a good chance for next week against Essendon. And Roxy, how's her hand? Um, she broke her hand, um, so she'll miss a number of weeks. Uh, hopefully the sooner the better, because she's had a really consistent pre-season, but um, yeah, it'll just be a little bit of time with her. How, how did she break her hand and how long do you expect to be out for? Just at training, yeah. yeah. So it'll be in, uh, several weeks, I reckon about three to four weeks, um, if not a little bit more, but it'll just a bit dependent on how she recovers. But um, yeah, it was really unfortunate. Our last main training session of, of our pre-season um, and just smothering a ball, so it was just a an, an unusual accident, but Rox has been awesome. I mean, she was out there today um, with our rehab non-playing players who trained before our game, um, helping out in drills, trying to get everything she can done and helping out the group. So, um, yeah, the sooner we can have her doing that on field, the better. Yeah. And what did you make of Verity and her? I thought Vez was really solid. Um, yeah, she was really solid, competed well. Um, to play on the wing, it's quite a structural role, a lot of um, understanding the structures of the game and, um, you know, she'd done a lot of work on that. And then you face a side like Richmond who place their, play their wings in a slightly different spot, so it was a whole new um, round of education for her. Um, but she just takes every challenge um, like the professional she is. I mean, for what she doesn't know about footy or didn't have in terms of her footy skill set, we get someone who's performed and competed at a high level her entire life. So um, she was good. I think, you know, I think she had seven tackles um, and that could be said for a lot of our players. So um, yeah, and then when ball in hand, she, she's done a lot of work on her, her kicking and skills and thought she made some really composed decisions and executed well as well. Are there any concerns injury wise from tonight's game? Yeah, well, Bella Lewis came off late in the game um, and will be assessed. Uh, I'm not 100% sure what it is. I think it was her leg, um, but they'll check that out. Um, so you never like to see that, uh, especially in that stage of the game. Um, 
but no, nah, hopefully, hopefully Val's all right. And how about you? How did you enjoy the, the first season proper game after a few pre-season ones? Like, was it emotional, stressful, enjoyable? Enjoyable, yeah. Um, I mean, every time you get to, it's, a, it's an amazing competition that we're a part of and um, yeah, to be in a role like this is a real privilege. So it's good to have the season underway and AFLW footy back and to be a part of it on opening night and have a record crowd turn up to support our, our club. Um, it was awesome to be a part of. So big thanks to the fans that, that turned up to support us. Just on Georgia Cleaver, obviously made her debut tonight, spent a perfect time on, on Katie Brennan. How did you see that role unfold? Yeah, I mean, Katie's a bit like Mon Conti. She's going to create opportunities. She's um, an incredible footballer and works really, really hard. Um, super athletic, so it's a tough job for anyone playing on her. Um, so Zoe Wackfer and Georgie Cleaver both shared duties on Katie. And yeah, Zoe had some good moments on her. Um, but Georgie, yeah, probably spent a bit more time on her late. Uh, Zoe's had an interrupted pre-season with a broken wrist, so only got back to full training last week. So we always knew that they were going to have to share it. And um, Georgie's just spent 10 days in um, national camp for the Aussie, di Aussie netball team under 21. So um, both off kind of different limited prep. But um, yeah, the great thing about both of them is they love a challenge and we know that they'll bring physicality. But yeah, I thought Georgie in particular, in her first ever AFLW game, to just nod her head and go out with a job like that, I thought she competed really well against Katie. And given the athlete she is, you know, that there's not many people that can play like Katie does. Um, she'll take you up to the ball. She's got an incredible tank, but then she's really good air and ground. Um, but yeah, we're lucky we've got one <laughs> in Georgie. And I think her game will t continue to grow. Um, but there'll be some big positives that, that come out of her game tonight. Sophie McDonald with concussion expecting her back next week? Yeah, yeah, on track for next week, um, just building through. It was a little bit delayed early in her concussion protocol, so we'd hoped that she'd be right for this week. Um, but yeah, next week against Essendon, I'm hoping Soph's available. She'll be another one that we look forward to having available and out on the track. Um, but again, I mean, she's been a stalwart of our back line for a number of years. Um, an incredible competitor and usually gets the big jobs like Brennan or Caitlin Greiser. Um, so for Beth Schilling to be able to hold, hold her end of the, um, the stick with, with Greiser was really pleasing as well. Shiloh's a competitor. So when we're picking a side about competitiveness and being connected, someone like Shiloh who um, will we'll give it her all, you have great confidence going into battle with her. So it'd be good to have Soph available, but it was good to see Shiloh step up tonight.